Salut tout le monde! Welcome to Florence Factorio. Today we're going to be looking at the new power plant I'm putting down. Long story short, I'm kind of borderline right now when everything is running. If you look at the graph, let's have a look on the 50 hour. As you can see, I've got some pretty big differences whether or not I'm running stuff. Basically, the difference here is whether or not I'm running science. Uh, the way I've got things set up, uh, because I'm trying to be efficient as much as possible on fuel consumptions for my power plant, I can't properly get to full power without having small moments of brownouts. Uh, I don't get actual blackouts, uh, but I get brownouts where we're not actually producing enough power for everything to run properly for small moments in time. Uh, this is due to uh, ramping up and ramping down time for the power plants as we will see and as we've discussed in the last video a little bit. This means that while things are working right now, if I increase at all peak power usage, I'm going to start having small issues if I have peaks that are too high. So I need to add a fifth power plant. If you remember in the last video, we had a look at Nervous where we control everything, power plants included. I was at 4 out of 6 possible on the control, this will be number 5. So, how are my power plants built before we look at them in detail? I basically use two blueprints. These blueprints are not 100% perfect, but the small things that have to be changed when I put them down, I can live with. Number one is this one, which we are now actually going to name because this is the latest version of it. I call these cores and X. Core and transfer. Actually, no, let's give it a better name. Core and what are these calls? Exchangers. Cores and exchangers. I'm gonna switch this. The core. There we go. So let's have a look. First thing you notice is there's a lot of landfill here. That's the number one thing. There's 14,000 units of it. That's because this blueprint is intended to be put with the part containing the cores and all the exchangers themselves is intended to be put over water. We will see why when we have a closer look at it. Second most important part we have in here are the heat exchangers themselves, which is why it's called cores and exchangers. Everything else is just support for these two things. There's also a few steam turbines. Those are not actually important in this blueprint, except they serve as a key for when we're going to be putting the next one. There's a second key we have in the second one. It just helps to align things, make sure everything is where it's supposed to be. We have some simple pumps. These are actually used first as a diagnostic tool because they make it easy to see whether steam is moving or not where it's supposed to go because every line coming out of the exchangers going into the second part has a pump in it. So it makes it visually easy to see whether or not we're getting uh, steam. They also serve as a one-way valve to make sure we don't have backflow and uh, they just help get the steam moving from the exchangers to the rest of the system. Surprisingly enough, they are worth it. Everything else from the arms, the logic stuff, the power, it's all support for these central things and to get it built. Uh, it does not require logistics to work. The robo parts are not there for function, they are there for construction. Uh, basically, I put the blueprint down a few times on top of itself. The first one puts all, uh, most of the landfill I need in. I have small pieces uh, around the edges here that need to be put in, if we look at the blueprint again. Just because where I got the blueprint from there was land in those spots. That's fine, it's just a few swipes with landfill. And it includes the water pumps to get it from the offshore which we keep some of 
close to the core to minimize the number of pipes we need overall. Because getting the water in for 20 cores like this is just uh, horrible if you're trying to do it small. And I can't make these lines as long and have them work properly if they're not this close to the cores. Uh, just heat transfer loss makes it that you never get anything further than these hot. That's why there's some at the ends over here and over here on the left and right. Uh, if I try to do it all of them in one on north and south, uh, the end ones don't get hot enough to produce steam and the cores get too hot. Because our goal here is to save fuel. There's actually controls right here that take in signals we get from the larger network which we do not have at this point in time yet that tell us if yes or no this power plant needs to be turned on. This one here will tell us from our inventory of steam from the sensor if we should or not be producing steam. And this one, which I need to change, the value of R4. No, actually, that's not it. Uh, yeah, yeah, NP. Actually, missing. Where's the other one? Yeah, there's a P signal I'm supposed to get. I think I get it from somewhere on this end. I'll need to recheck. But yeah, basically, right now, oh yeah, I need to set up. Let's have a look. Yeah, I need to set it up when I set up the proper exchange. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to need to be setting up something that reads from the power, the main uh, information network, and tells this if it's supposed to be on or off. It will send. A value of P equal to 1 if we're supposed to be getting turned on according to that little piece of logic. The reason it's not close here uh, is uh, I'm not actually going to be connecting this whole thing to the greater network because I don't want the steam information from here directly. It has to be encoded and decoded. So I'll have a small uh, in out section when I connect this to the larger information network. We'll see that in a bit. So right now, I'm still actually not completely done. Yeah, we are done building it. Nice. It finished not long ago. So now we have two things left to do. First, we need to be able to tell this thing whether or not it's supposed to be on, and we need to output the information for the steam counter we're going to be using. So. I can't see S here. Right now I should be able to see S. So that means our central network is not connected. That's normal uh, and sort of intentional. The previous one was connecting here. Uh, in this case, I'm actually going to be connecting more at the bottom. And not all the information makes it in and out anyway. So we're actually going to be connecting here, 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 here. Our goal is to get to these guys up there. So here, here, and then this here. We're good. Now we need a green. We just follow red backwards. Alright, so now we're into these little guys, which I've built using a blueprint that has all the wires. So if we go down here, we can see we still have this. Now the greater information network is built into the rail network. 
And if we can see here, we have connection to the rail network to get power, but there's no connection. So on this side, we can see P is currently equal to 4, which is what we care about on this point. The, this one will be number 5. So, we do this. We will need, actually no, I need to have a second pole here, because I need my two poles to be close. Maybe connecting this pole to here, and the red pole. So now we have a relatively narrow gap in our network. It make, just makes things easier for working. First thing I need to know if I'm supposed to be on or not. So we will need control system information from the red network. This is number 5, so I need P to be equal to 5. So FP, I want this to be 8 equal to or greater than 5. Why greater than? Because we don't want just one of them to work. If I had a sixth one, I need it to work. And we'll just be outputting 1 on P. Then we are going to connect the output of this guy to here. So what this does is if P here is equal to or greater than 5, it sends 1 here, which means the arms on the core will begin to put fuel into the core if it's on the belt. Now if we look up here, right now you can see the input arms, which are these little guys here, are all connected using red wires to this here which gets its signal from these guys here. Now these guys, for them to work, we need to get P and S, which is being analyzed by this guy here, which will output R, as we saw earlier, when the two conditions are met. Now we can simulate this. I just having this guy here say P. As you can see, we have P equal to 1 and S equal to 1. So that means we're supposed to be running. R is now equal to 1. The arms will see that and say, oh, we're supposed to be putting fuel in. So if we go look here, they are now enabled. Why are they not putting fuel in? Because there isn't any. But now we're sure this works can remove that and do the other thing we need to do. For this I'll need a arithmetic control. We are going to be adding zero to the value of the steam liquid. Now the way I've got this set up I'm using the signal for numbers to, this, to transfer the information. I started at 0 and I will end at 9. That means that the steam num the number the station is supposed to use is its number minus 1. So we will be outputting on 4. So this will now output on the number 4. We need to be reading green information from here and outputting it to here without a connection. So as we can see, green and red are here. Don't connect directly to the other side. Same thing here. We see they don't light up, so they're not connected. The only connection is be using these two devices here. Again, we need to know, make sure the steam is working. So once again, we will put this here, but this time we will put it down using green wires to the green network. We are going to turn it off, simulate steam at 9999 if we turn it on we can see here that we have on signal 49999 if we go all the way over here and we look at display number five one two three four five yes I know I'm going in a circle instead of two lines I don't care 
I like it this way. So we can see that the display now says 9999 and it's not moving. If we remove the signal and we go back, it is now back to zero. Now, last thing we're going to need to do is feed and clean up this place. Uh, the fun thing with nuclear power plants is they not only require input, they generate garbage. So we will be needing two train stations. Now luckily, I have them made already somewhere else. Because the way I'm set up, I can just make a bit of a copy-paste. Just literally just plump it down, erase the stuff I don't need. We are going to tie all of this up properly so we can have the network build everything. Now why do I use the logistics network to build stuff? Uh, basically because it's faster and simpler. I'm already at robot speed 15. So it's actually faster than just trying to carry everything with me because I always fail at that. Now we will need these to be connected to the logistics network as well because as we've discussed in the last video, we get our fuel for the trains that way. Now there's only one train doing the input and output for these guys, so I don't need to have a parking space. I will need, however, to have some of these guys to be able to lay out the tracks, which is annoying. Oh well. Let's walk over here, just steal one. probably need to see about doing my curving a little bit earlier anyway. Now, like this. Screw. I forgot. You have at least one in my inventory to be able to work. Next one. Both of them will then need to go through this. Oops, sorry, I should probably not whistle into my mic. I just like to whistle when I'm playing. Let us see. Should get us rid of the trees. They're already straight right there, so we can go straight like this. And like this. Next, we'll need to Make a hole. In this belt so that trains can leave. And another one right here. So trains can come in. <coughs> we'll then be connecting this here.
There we go. Next. I don't actually need these. I don't need this one. This. And I'm actually going to be able to go on just that. Now what I'm doing is I'm getting ready to receive and get rid of all of my fuel. Now these are going to get built. Once they are built, they should automatically start working. Uh, they have the right names and everything. The way they work uh, is the train that receives the nuclear fuel cells is disabled unless all of the receiving boxes are empty. It enables once the last piece of fuel leaves the train, the boxes. There's actually going to be plenty enough for it to run on a while, for a while on just what's on the belt. And it doesn't take that long for the train to get here anyway, because there's just a few power plants. And the other one down here will turn on when these boxes are full enough to fill up a train of the used ones. The only things I should have left to do, if I'm not mistaken, is... Uh, I didn't put these on. Oh well. Should not be too much of an issue. I have them on me, but that's fine. Just ask for them. I need to finish up the signals, make sure everything's working right. Going to add a few s uh, normal signals here and a few chain signals for the tra traffic control. Once all of this is finished building, all I have left to do is add the very last train station, which I'm actually going to add right now, which is a tech stop for when I need to come here and leave. Some of this is missing a few things. We are going to want radar here to make sure we can see everything. I'm probably going to want these guys here because apparently there's pieces missing. So I'm put this guy here. That should help finish it up. I'm actually going to be missing a few pipes around there, around here. Going to fix those. The reason the pipes are missing is just they're over uh, landfill and they're over water, so I need to put in some landfill. Let's go over there because the radar is not proper. Landfill blueprint. And none of this requires water. So we can just fill it all out. And I can actually fill up like this. Once the landfill has been put in, I'll be able to apply the Blueprint one last time. Just make sure these are filled up. And we'll put in the few pipes that are missing.
Hmm, there's one missing here. Looks like I missed a piece on this. Let's remake it. Yep, okay. So I need to go from here. I'm gonna remove these, which I just added in this guy. I'm gonna just re add this part. A little bit more. Now, the hard part is making sure you get the key right. Problem right now is just making sure. There we go. I can see a bunch of stuff is blue. That's a good sign. Yeah, we can see there's more pipes that need to be put here that weren't there before. And these need to be put where they're supposed to go. There's one more of these that's supposed to be here that wasn't there before. Possibly because there was no landfill here when I put it down last time. So now we just wait for the robots to get here. When I'm talking about a key, I mean basically part that I know is good. Right now I'm using the central part that's close to the core. So I know if these are all okay, there we go, everything will align. Because if they don't, things are not where they're supposed to go. Because this is supposed to be one blueprint, I have to cut it in two because it's so huge. So that makes it really annoying to put down in one go. You need to make sure you have some overlap between the two. Now, this should mostly be functioning now. The last thing is we've not received fuel yet. So we cannot make our first test run. Let's make sure this is connected. Now if you look at these here, uranium fuel cell train is enabled, so it can output. The trash train at the top is disabled because the train isn't here. So if we look here, our train is... What? It's stuck there. Why? It's not to be used to stick. I think I know why. I made a small mistake. That's zero. So why aren't you leaving? Is there stuff left in here? Ah, these boxes aren't connecting like they're supposed to. Shit. Not sure why this is actually the second time this happens. Uh, I'm using the experimental version, and there was an update, so it might just be something broke. Every now and again, some of these wires just vanish. Uh, basically, the boxes here are supposed to be connected. That means I'm actually going to have the same problem here, probably. Yep. So let's connect it. There we go need to make sure these are all connected, otherwise uh, the train comes and some of these are not properly emptied. When they're not emptied, they get full, and that's a problem. Just because it stops the train going around. 
Let's have a look, make sure we don't have that issue with the other train station here. These all appear to be connected. And as it's all the same blueprint, pretty sure that's just a bug. Alright. So, let's follow the train. See where it's going. Now it's actually going to Expedition Nuclear Fuel. Because it's not full, and I just sent it there. It's gonna go and grab some fuel. And then come back to the closest available station. In this case it should be our new power station. for our next destination, which is reception uranium fuel cells. All of the reception fuel for fuel cells are named the same thing, so it'll go to whichever one is enabled. That's why they dis I, dis I have them being disabled when there's no, uh, there's still some fuel in the boxes. As you can see, I'm using nuclear fuel for the trains. Uh, it gives us better acceleration, uh, it lets me use uranium, uh, which I have a ton of. So it's a very good deal. Plus, I can it makes fueling the trains extremely simple. I can just use logistics uh, because each unit of fuel, first they don't stack, and second they have so much energy in them that they last a very long time. If you look, I can't even look because I'm not on it. But basically, uh, they run for a very, very long distance before running out. So we don't have to refuel the trains too often, so the logistics network has no trouble keeping up even if the trains are really far. Right, it's almost here. If we look a little further, we're just up here, north of the Nivrem mine. You can see the engineer right there, reception uranium fuel cells. Now we receive this, so we can put that here that here and that right there so as you can see fuel is only on one side of the belt that's actually fine uh, we only ever use it on one side anyway so and this will give us more than enough for what we need so let's sit on the belt and just follow it along. The train having delivered its cargo is now leaving and it will not come back until this train station is wide again. Which should happen probably once more uh, before I'm finished testing this place uh, just because to fill up the belt and everything. So, fuel is coming very slow because we're using yellow belts. Could use blues or whatever, it doesn't matter. Uh, but yellow provides enough and they're super cheap to make, so I don't care. And it'll come here and enter the center here from this belt, and then get here. Why is this set up this way? Because I want to make 100% sure whatever I'm getting on either side is on the north side of this getup. So that 
it is on the inside of the loop here. This way, the arms that take the garbage out have no problem I'll put it on the outside part of the belt, which then turns all the way around. There's a loop around the cores, comes here, primary input is from this side so that we have a continuous loop that's always moving on the inside and it only fills when there's a blank from this line and all the garbage gets filtered using this little guy here output on this belt follows the belts and ultimately ends up at the trains down here to be put in the boxes to be taken out by the garbage train now during this whole explanation, the fuel is making its way here. As we can see, the arms are currently disabled, so it should not go into the cores yet. And we can have a look at the north side here. Things are starting to build up. I don't actually have a radar yet, and I removed it, so I should probably go and put it back. only so it gets built eventually. We have too many radars around here. Let's remove this guy. He's kind of pointless. One of the nice things about the new experimental version is you can easily see on the mini-map where your radar gets. Now this should allow us, once all the landfill has been put in, to finish building the power plant, more or less in time for first activation. Our fuel's here, so all that's left now is to make sure everything's going as it's supposed to. Now we can see that we have our loop being fed but the arms are not putting anything into the cores which is what's supposed to happen right now because remember we don't have the P signal I don't want to be annoyed like these so we will now be simulating the P signal in a little bit just to see what happens when we do turn this off There we go. So now we have a local switch to turn this thing on. Can't turn it off unless it is the only thing turning it on, but it can turn it on. That's just because it's easier to fix things locally instead of having to go remote, even if I'm letting the robots do it. Let's see our landfill. It's getting there. Let's see how much gets added in. Why do we put the blueprint down again? Let's go here. There we go. We got the few things that we're missing. Well, not so few. A surprising amount of it. Everything here is here. It's all good. All right. Now we need to turn this on to make sure we are making steam. Now there, I know there's a few pieces missing here, so it's not going to be ideal. But right now I just want to make sure we're getting all our signals where we're supposed to. So let's do a single turn on, turn off. Now all the cores are currently starting at room temperature, which was 15, and heating up. Is it 15 or 20? I never remember. And 15C. So the cores are now starting up. They only get one injection of fuel, because right now our goal is to see if we're getting the information we're supposed to at the other end. I have confidence in my blueprint once it's all been put down properly and we'll be able to observe if it has or not by checking these guys while we're producing steam. 
pumps here. As long as the pumps are pumping, we know steam's getting out. All right, so still running, 300. Now these should hit a wall around 600 uh, as far as heating up very, very quickly as steam starts being produced and outputted. Uh, it will start, well, not a wall as much as a cliff. It's going to start going up a lot slower. And like I said, it should max out somewhere between 900 and 999. If everything is working properly, of course. And we're still missing a bunch of stuff up here. Uh, let's cancel that guy since I just put one here. But this should give us a good test. Now the goal here, we want to make sure that we're outputting the steam so that Nervous can read it. Pretty sure it will. Just making sure and being extra cautious. As you can see, some of these are kind of low right now. And they're growing very, very slowly up. That's because I'm very close to my max uh, production capacity. So what's going on is even though I'm starting to feed them at 5,000 steam, they still go down uh, actually more than 3,000 in some cases before they stop going back up. So we get down actually below 2,000 steam, which is a problem. Uh, this is very, very close to running out of steam for some of the turbines, so we can get a brownout. And this is because getting to full production when you're actually pumping the steam out as fast as it will do takes a bit of time because they can't get up to temperature because they're outputting energy. So if we look right now, I'm still waiting for this to come up at temperature. If we go and have a look, uh, all right. four is having trouble right now. So four is here. If we look at the cores. We're getting close to 900 degrees Celsius, but they are not moving very quick. And if we look at the end of the lines here, like this guy is not even hot enough yet to produce steam. This guy is ramping up still, and all the ones below it are at max. So it takes a while for all of these to get hot enough for max production. Alright, what's the temperature here? Alright, 600. So as we can see, we're producing steam right now, because these guys are working. What's our steam level at? Still not reading. That's because we're actually eating the steam faster than we're making it and or storing it. We're actually storing it a little bit, but these take a while to start filling up. So we're actually eating it pretty quickly uh, as we're at close to max power. But this tells me it's all functional, which is really good. Now these are pretty much done. We can go and have a look at our pumps. I find this easier to do in person than on radar. These are all working. This is all working. So right now what I'm doing is I'm making sure all the pumps that put steam out to the rest of the stuff is working, are working. 
although they're not at full capacity because uh, on the exit exchanger side there's a lot of overlap and interconnection uh, they should all be getting some steam to pump out that's where all of these work Let's look at these one of them is not working why is this guy not working Alright, we're gonna have to follow it. Ah, this thing got in the way. Alright, is there another one not working? It's important to have a look at this to make sure, because as you saw, the pre-existing electricity I'd put in caused problems. And we have another one here that appears to have a problem. It's not going anywhere. We probably have a line here with no steam. There we go. Nope. Just don't have enough. Huh. Let's have a look on our original wire disconnects. Alright, so it's connecting to this line here. Which appears to still be there and not connecting to anything. Alright, so this is our problem. Just going to grab it on here. That should do it. All right. Not too bad, considering I'd put in uh, previous electricity to make sure everything was working during building, and I didn't remove it. Just two pumps is really good, and it should have been an easy fix. Let's see if the robots have put the one at the top down. Oops, that's right, it wasn't here, it was here. Now well, this is still running. Ah, 44 steam. So if I go over here, I should now see... Reading, good. Next, this is off, we're going to remove it, I'm going to go to Nervous and turn this power plant on officially. So we're taking the train back to central control, the robots will finish building what needs building. Ooh, looks like there might be a little problem here, let's have a look at it. Nope, it connects, okay, good. Now uh, we are going to need a text up right here. This, this, and this. This. Uh, the way I name these, I just add TS at the beginning. So this one I'll be TS for Mike. Now to get here, I actually took the train to here, so let's go ahead and add it. have to wait for the train to get here. There we 
go. Let's go back to Nervous. Which will be the first stop on the list. Now we can see all my pumps here are working. This one is yet to be finished fixing. As you can see it's still a ghost. As we can see it's now down to two fuels in there because we've stopped fueling it. We're not even at full temperature yet. Let's go have a look at for how it's going. Look at the end, 940. These are actually the hottest one. On this end here. And it's having trouble going any higher, which is normal. Still rising, but very slowly. Alright, we're almost there. Here we are, main base. Let's go up to the control center. So as we go up here, let's take these off. Take advantage of the darker room, darker time to see the displays properly. You can see this guy's going up. If we come down here, you can see four lights, controlled by this guy here. If we up it to five, now remember at the other end on the power plant how we had only two fuel cells left in it. Let's go and have a look now. Dun, 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 dun. We're back to five. Why? Because these guys are active again. Now that we are giving it the right signal. So what's the temperature like? 800 something. Ah, this is now fixed. So as we can see, every single one of our pump we have here is working. That means all the steam leaving the place. All the lines are working. There's no issue anywhere. Which is pretty freaking awesome. Now, what's that do to our power budget? Ooh, much nicer. As you can see, we've been using a lot of power for a while. Why is that, I wonder? That's because, as I think I've said at the beginning of the video, we're doing research right now. This is our current inventory. Pretty sweet. Let's have a look, see the last run, the run, how it's been doing. Now, the question we have is how much science are we making? This can be answered by how much science are we eating? But we also need to know how much we're producing to be able to correlate the numbers properly. As you can see, we've got little dips in here, really big dips in here. This guy is the lowest one. So let's concentrate on lowest production. There we go. It's been pretty steady at exactly 1K, which if you remember, that's the goal. So right now I'm pretty happy with the speed at which we're producing. What I'm less happy about is we're at around 50 FPS when everything is running at max. So my next goal will be to lower the number of entities to see if it makes a difference. I'll see you later.